I'm Koki Ai on this project with Veta. Joe. I'm Jennifer Bunce. Uh, I am in the steering committee and working with the rest of the steering committee to bring you this adventure, your incubator for the semester. I teach in Albuquerque, New Mexico at um, Central New Mexico Community College, which is much easier to say as CNM and uh, teach biology there and looking forward to working with a new group this, this semester. Hello everyone, my name is Joe Escabel. I teach biology at Lansing Community College and I've been involved in this project for a few years now and I've been very excited to see the modules that have come out of here and use them in my classroom. So look forward to working with y'all. Uh, let's pick uh, Deb. Hi everyone, um, I'm Deb Rook. I also work at BioQuest. I do a lot of professional development, both in incubators and faculty mentoring networks with CUBES. If you have any questions about that, you can ask me another time. Um, and I am here to help with a lot of the, the tech stuff. So you've probably seen my name around. Okay. Hi, uh, uh, um, my name is Kevin Simpson, a research scientist here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, my company and I do research in disease diagnostics. Additionally, over the past couple of years, I've worked with educators uh, across the U.S. on workforce development. So sort of keying in on key elements that uh, students could learn that would actually give them the skills that they need in the um, uh, research atmosphere. So happy to be here and great to meet you all. I'm Elise Hugo. I am another member of the steering committee. I am full-time math faculty at Everett Community College. And so I'm going to pick on another Everett Community College member and say, Wendy, it's your turn. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Wendy. Um, and that was going to be my intro, Elise, that, that I work. <laughs> I work with Elise at Everett Community College. Um, and I teach primarily in the ORCA program, which is um, focused on marine science for uh, high school juniors and seniors. Uh, Melanie, do you want to introduce yourself? Melanie Lenahan. Sure, thanks, Madam. I'm Melanie Lenahan. I'm a professor of biology at Raritan Valley Community College in New Jersey. And last year, I was part of an incubator um, that I think was really great. Vedam was our uh, facilitator. Um, and this uh, spring, I'll be a facilitator for um, an incubator group. I'll go ahead. Um, I have a similar pathway to coming here. My name is Jen Adler, and I teach at Maysville Community College in Kentucky. And last year I also was in a incubator and this year I'm a facilitator. I teach biology if I didn't say that already. Glad to be here. Adranisha, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Adranisha Frazier. I am a biology instructor at North Shore Technical Community College, which is located in Louisiana near uh, Kevin, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, hi. Um, I joined uh, QBACC last year. I was in part, I was in uh, one of the cohorts. We created a, a module, which I'm very excited to implement this semester. So I'm looking forward to working with another group. And I'll Step. pick, oh, I, I get to pick my person? Go ahead, yes, please. Okay, so I had Jay Adler, cause I was like, I like her name, but she already went. Um, <laughs> so I'll pick Pete Kasselik, is that right? Yes, that is right. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, thank you. I'm, I teach math at Pierce College in Washington State, so down the road from the Everett people. And uh, my focus is primarily on statistics. And um, I used to have a consulting business where I did environmental statistics, but I don't do that anymore. Uh, and I've not been part of a group like this and I'm very excited. One of our biology teachers put me onto this because she knows I like to do data for real instead of just pretend problems in books. So 
Um, and I have no idea who's left to go. So uh, I'll defer to somebody to volunteer. I can introduce myself. Um, I'm Heather Zimbler Di Lorenzo. Um, I am a biology professor at Georgia State University Perimeter College. Um, I am new to the community college area. I spent 11 years at a small liberal arts school in New York and just made the change this summer uh, during the quarantine to a, a new position. Um, and so I've done a number of cubes before um, and I'm excited to get involved in this one. I guess I'll introduce myself. So following Heather, we're from the same place, even though I think we don't know her. So I am a, an assistant professor at Georgia State University Perimeter College also. Um, I, I'm in the Claxton campus, by the way. Um, and it's my first time working for with, with quantitative biology in a project like this. And I'm very excited because I think our community college really needs um, students to be less scared of what quantitative biology is. Um, so I'm really happy to be here and contribute. I guess I'll go. <clears throat> I was part of an incubator last year and um, the first one sort of died when COVID hit, big surprise. Um, don't blame anybody for that. I know we were all crazy and all of us that had to make that transition anyway. Um, so I did participate in a second one in the fall and we just published our uh, module last week. So that's exciting. And I'll be facilitating <clears throat> with several other people who are not here yet. Um, my name is Stephanie, forgot to tell you that. And I'm from Rhone State Community College in East Tennessee. We actually have nine campuses across six or seven counties, I think. So we're a little bit crazy that way. Guess I'll um, go I'll next. Go. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> go ahead. I'll get you to it. Um, my name is Alita Janmat. I'm at the University of the Fraser Valley. We were formerly Fraser Valley College, so we're kind of in between a four-year institution and a two-year. Um, I've been involved in a lot of uh, CUBES FMNs. I haven't been involved with, you know, the incubator group yet, but uh, I really like uh, adding a lot of quantitative elements to my courses, so I'm excited to work on that. And I'm in the biology department. <laughs> Okay, now I'll go. <laughs> uh, my name is Andrea Huntoon and I teach at Fox Valley Technical College in Wisconsin. Um, and I basically teach general biology courses, but I also teach a little bit of sustainability on the side. Um, and I'm very excited to be part of this because ever since I've taken this position, I've struggled with basic math skills with my students, um, interpretation of graphs, calculating averages, all that stuff. So I'm really excited to learn how to be able to better implement those skills with my students. I'll go ahead. My name is uh, Randy Moser. I teach mathematics. I'm a professor of math at uh, Roy Georgetown Technical College in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Um, I heard of this experience. I've never been a part of an incubator myself, but my chair and as well as a couple of the chairs of the bio program were in one recently and highly suggested it. I'm always looking for new ways to kind of incorporate uh, you know, applications and real world experiences into the class. Um, do we have anyone else left for? Uh, I, will, like? I will go. Uh, my name is Pallavi Bhale and I teach math at Montgomery College, uh, Germantown campus, Maryland. And this is my first time with incubator and I'm very, very excited. I guess I'll go next. I'm Eric Morgan. I'm an adjunct math professor at Rhone State Community College. This is my first opportunity to get to participate in an incubator, but I love doing hands-on projects with my students. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity to add something to my repertoire. Okay, I might be the last one. Hi guys. Um, my name is Alyssa. I work at uh, Rome State Community College with Stephanie there. She's the one who sort of got me into this program. I'm one of the newest math faculty. So this is my first experience with anything like this, guys. And I'm excited to, to work on this stuff and actually be able to implement some of the stuff in the classroom because like you guys said, it's 
you know, it's hard to see the actual application. So I'm excited to, to be able to implement in the class. Okay. Hey, um, thanks for all the introductions. Uh, once again, welcome. Um, uh, we are excited to have you as part of this project. And I hope you'll have a positive experience being part of this incubator and developing modules. Um, we are recording this session. Uh, I should have mentioned earlier. Um, so as you see, we don't have everyone here. So once we have this recording, we will share this in our QB at CC site for those who couldn't make it today uh, so that they can catch up with uh, uh, the conversation. Um, Joe, do you, do you want to share the screen? Okay, so uh, we have really packed agenda. We are already kind of behind schedule, uh, but we will try to uh, uh, fit it all in. Um, so you would like to give you a tour of the uh, the site. Uh, I'm sure most of you already navigated it through the <clears throat> the grant site. Um, uh, Joe, do you want to? take them through uh, briefly, just show some very important parts and maybe a couple of examples of modules uh, to see what's typically uh, published, uh, what are the different resources. All right, so we have been having different groups create modules or adapt them for a little bit now. And we've been hosting them on this main website. It's provided by an infrastructure by a different group called Cubes. So this website here um, is helped run by a number of people. Deb Brooke here is involved in making sure that this operates smoothly and we are all using appropriately, answering any tech questions we have. They do a great job of providing us with a network to host these modules. So at this website that we have here, we have all the modules that we list over here um, organized in a few different ways. We have all the modules listed A through Z and then we have them sorted by different things that you need. Like if you need a module that deals with a specific math content, specific biology content, or to cover specific quantitative skills, we have them in pre-sorted lists for you here. So we can look up just briefly all of the modules, uh, A through Z that we have, or at least approximately, I'm not sure if the algorithm does A through Z or publication date, Actually, it does publication dates in reverse order. Okay, so we have currently five that we have published on the CUBES website. Um, this is a non-peer reviewed process, but it is an OER publication process. They host the license, make sure everything is appropriately stored. All the documents are here for anyone to find in the future. And so we have five of these that we've created and we have quite a few more on the way that we are in the process of publishing right now from other groups. So we have a variety of different math and biology integrated modules that you can use in your classroom for any variety of length. Some of these are shorter activities, 15, 20 minutes. Some of them are multi-day activities, a three hour lab, two one and a half hour sessions. And they can really vary depending on what you want. And again, you can adapt these. So if we go to the QB at CC modules sorted by the quantitative biology skills concepts, which is kind of a, a way that we've been using to say anything that involves um, math and biology, numeracy, quantitative skill sets. We've just been calling it quantitative biology. And based on some past groups here, we have these 15 different categories that we've been putting these modules into. So right now we have a big hit in terms of our modules following the ability to um, fit into these categories, create graphs, interpret graphs, interpret tables, and then manipulate equations. We have some other stuff as well here that are well applicable, like converting units of measurements and then estimate accuracy of answers, stuff that we think would be very helpful for our students. So you can click on any one of these and it'll take you to the appropriate area and indicate what of those activities there are so you can peruse those. So if we were to click on one of those, and I've already opened it up here just to expedite the process, this is what we start to see in the CUBES website for a specific module. We have the title of the activity here, sizes, scales, and specialization, an activity highlighting the diversity of cell types. 
and we have what would be considered kind of like an abstract in the terms of a publication. Here we just call it a description, giving you an estimation of what we're trying to achieve, the learning goals, what types of different skills students will gain when they go through this process. And then we have the files that they can use here. So they primarily are just in Word document or PowerPoint files, but whatever the group wants to publish. If you want to do a PDF, that is completely up to you and your group here. So we would have some activities here. We have like a facilitation guide for the teachers. So that way, when you're reading this, you know the different ins and outs, different answer keys already provided here. We have a PowerPoint data slide already made. So you don't have to create anything. You could just put this up for different like key questions if you want to have your groups discuss stuff. And then we have the student handout that we have here. And to briefly highlight how integral these modules are, in the terms they really can join math and biology to allow you to understand both the biology better and the math biology. For this activity here, if we open up the PowerPoint that we have here, really the meat of this assignment was that we found a paper um, that had published um, all the different cell types in the body that looked at how prevalent they are based on estimations. And so it turns out that the human body, 84% red blood cells like of all the different cells that we have, 84% of them are red blood cells. But because they're so tiny, if you look at the mass of a person by their cell types, only like 3% of our body mass is from red blood cells here. So this kind of creates like a dichotomy that we have or a schism, right? You really by numbers or prevalence, frequency, ready blood cells, but by weight, not so much. And then muscle fibers though, they are 0.00%, which definitely throws our students for a loop. It's kind of a fun talking point, but because they are so large, if you look by average mass of an average human, 28% of a human's mass is related to muscle fibers here. So it creates a nice opportunity to go through the math here. And it really, by going through the math, you understand the biology better. And then by manipulating the equations of this, you understand the math better here. So what we end up doing for our students for the activity in the student um, activity handout, we have a nice table for them to fill out where they're missing different components and they have to manipulate the mass density volume equations to then come through and solve these questions, problems here. So we give them a guided tour to say, all right, if we can figure out the pattern of how the numbers and average volume and density equal out, can you then use that data to figure out these? And then we kind of make that the meat of the assignment. So definitely highlighting the math and the biology together to create something that is way better than any of them separate together, just in the same way that Kit Kats use um, the crunchy and the chocolate or Reese's uses peanut butter and chocolate to make something way better than on their own. Okay, so that's what we're looking to have you all create here. Um, so that's a brief overview of the website that we wanted to go through at this time. Um, let's see here. So, um, at this point, I guess we could ask, are there any questions that we have of this? Arvedim, would you like to um, regain the, the reins on this? Uh, one, if, if that's all right. Yes, sir, Kevin. Uh, for the, I saw that there's some adaptions uh, also listed for the different activities. So if an educator or someone was interested in adding to what is already there or giving another dynamic to it is that the cubes that are open to that of course we have an infrastructure set up to keep track of that and so if we you don't want to do the full activity that takes an hour and a half you want to do just a 15 minute chunk you can definitely have the full permission to like remove 85 percent of it and then publish just the remaining chunk and say all right this is based off that and this is why it's different and you could easily publish that on your own without any like, you know, approval from the previous authors. Or if you want to add more to it, say, all right, we want to like beef it up a little bit more, do something else, you can also do that. And so we'd be very happy to see stuff like that come out of this in the future as well. And it is all ready for you to do so. Great question. Any others? All right, just trying to go through the um, side view here for Zooms. I don't see if there's anything right now. So if so, if um, feel free to speak up. Otherwise, we can definitely have more opportunities to ask questions in smaller group formats in just a few minutes here. 
All right, so Vedam, I think we can turn this back to you. Okay, go so on. Vedam actually had to go teach, okay. um, which would be a hazard of all of us having instructional duties. Um, so I'm gonna walk us through the next section. Um, so one of the things that BioQuest does is a lot of professional development uh, that is interdisciplinary. And one of the things that we have learned in the course of 35 years of professional development is that different disciplines have different languages. And sometimes we use the same words and we mean very different things. And I think that Joe is showing you an example of that. Um, so I don't know if you guys have seen this cartoon before where it shows the, the cell dividing and it says biology, the only science where multiplication and division mean the same thing. So mathematicians, buckle your seatbelts. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to put you into um, breakout rooms so that you can have some discussion of how different terms mean different things. And we have a few terms that we're gonna start you with, but you yourselves may find other terms that, that you can think of. Um, the reason that we do this is because we want everybody to feel really comfortable in their incubator saying, I don't know what you mean when you use that term. Um, this, this is one of the advantages of working in an interdisciplinary setting. You have other experts that you can ask to clarify what they mean so that you can understand. Um, but you should not feel like um, this, is not a, this is not a bad thing. It's a good thing to be asking and saying, I don't know what that means in math, or I don't know what that means in biology. It looks like you're using this term differently. Can you explain how you use this term in your class? This is what makes these particular interdisciplinary modules so exceptionally valuable, not only to us as the developers, but to the users, because you'll explain those things for them. So, we have set you up in um, breakout rooms based on your incubator groups. And I'm going to put some terms in the um, chat window, which you should be able to see from your, your groups. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and put them in here um, now. And we're going to ask you to take turns across disciplines. So have a mathematician say what they mean when they say digit, and then have a biologist explain what they mean when they say digit. And in most of these rooms, we should have one of your, one or more of either your um, incubator facilitators or um, a, a someone from the, the QB at CC project to help facilitate. So this will be about 10 minutes and then we'll pull you back into this room and we can uh, sort of share our experiences on that. Any questions before we send you forth? All right, Deb, would you like to make the magic happen?